Hey everyone, it's Livewire or Squiggly McPickens. In this video, I'll be going over an introduction to neck spins. After you finish this video, I'll be doing an immediate follow up on how to do neck wraps or suicide wraps. So make sure you check in for that as well. Remember, before you start jamming and doing moves with your neck and back, it's really important to stretch out. You should always stretch before you jam. If you haven't already, press pause and go do that now. Before you pick up a light whip, it's a good idea to practice fiber grip moves with a soft prop. Practice with your soft prop to avoid injury when you're starting out and getting your body positioned down. If you already have one, that's great. If not, I'll leave a link to one of my videos on how to make your own. Let's talk about the basics of a neck spin. We're going to move the whip by using the motion of our neck, moving it from in front of us in wall plane to the space behind us, which is known as dark wall plane, as we can't see it. If you're not familiar with planes or need a refresher on which plane is which, then check out the link I left in the description, which includes some fundamentals. In short, we're going to be moving it from in front of us to behind us by interrupting its path and spinning it off of our neck to change its direction. The action used to move it from one plane to the other will be a sweeping motion of our head tipping back. I'll be covering all kinds of variations to this move in later videos, so smash that subscribe button to stay up to date. Let's break down the components to get you to a neck spin. There are two things to keep in mind. The length of your whip, including where along that length you want the spin to start, and how far around the body part, your neck in this case, the whip will travel before you respond with an action. The length plays into both the speed of the whip and the maximum distance it can actually travel around your body. In terms of length of whip and distance it has to travel, you'll want to think about the difference between a spin and a wrap. I'm going to refer to the neck, but this applies to any body part. A spin will travel a partial distance around your neck, but will remain open. It will start to rotate around, but before it closes over my throat and before it overlaps itself, I'm going to take action and move it to the space behind me. Whereas with a wrap, it will continue and overlap with the original point of contact. The speed of the whip is also affected by the length of your whip and will determine how quickly it makes a rotation around you. Just to give you an idea of what that looks like, in most of this tutorial, I'll be using a four foot whip to demonstrate with. I'm doing that so that you have an easier view of what's going on. However, a shorter whip means a faster rotation, and that also means a faster action or response is required from you to change its course. For the purposes of comparison, in this clip, I'm using a six foot whip. As you can see, when you have more length, your whip will be moving slower and you'll have more time to react. To start out, I would recommend you have your whip long, but not so long that your handle hits the ground. Before trying this with your neck, you can practice by putting your arm in your whip's path and having it rotate around while traveling in a straight line. Instead of letting it rotate fully around, put your arm at a length that will stop its rotation. Once you're feeling good about that length and your whip being lined up, you'll switch to practice as if our head was just in its place. You can do a spin with your fibers as well. It's a good way to practice your positioning before you spin your whip by the fibers. You want to approach this by dipping your head forward and bow at the waist so that the back of your neck is flat. You want a flat space to catch the whip so you can move it behind you in a straight line. Now practice sweeping your head straight back in a straight line. I find looking up to the sky as if following a straight vertical line helps when fighting against the pull of the whip when it makes contact with you. You definitely want to pay special attention to practicing getting this position correct as your position determines the angle your whip will travel. If these angles are off, then your whip can travel wide of the dark wall plane and hit you in the back of the legs. So save your legs some bruises and practice this action. Once you have the positioning right, then grab your whip, spin it in wall plane and bring your whip in line with your neck. This can be done with either an upward spin or a downward spin. Whichever direction your whip is spinning, it will connect first with your neck on the side it's spinning towards. So now the same way you made contact with your arm, start winding it around your neck just up until the point where you approach the full circumference, 
Then use your hand to return the whip to the opposite direction. Having your hand out beside your face to keep it from rotating all the way around will help keep you from accidentally hitting yourself while you're getting used to the feeling of that first contact. Practice this until you feel comfortable with the feeling of it making contact with your neck. That point when the whip makes contact with your neck is your cue to take action. Sweep your head back. Don't forget to keep your eyes in a straight line up to the ceiling or sky and don't tip so far back that your whip ends up on an angle hitting you in the legs. Finally, your whip will have some pull on your neck and it's natural that you may want to pull away from that feeling, but you need to resist that urge. Pulling away from the whip will alter the angle and move it into a pathway too wide or hit you in the leg. Once it starts to rotate behind you, move your arms straight forward and on the upward swing of the whip, it will return to spinning in front in wall plane where you started. I'll be covering continuous spins in another video. Once you can do it with the direction you're comfortable with, then make sure to alternate to the other. Practice spins with both a downward spin and an upwards rotation. And don't forget to hit like if you found this video helpful, smash that subscribe button to stay up to date, and check out my video on neck wraps coming up next. I just want to see what happens when they tear the world apart. I want to change things.